Hi, I'm Paul Dempsey from Something for Kate and you're watching Moshcan. Um, well, I just, uh, we, uh, after finishing up sort of touring Desert Lights, we were kind of touring that well into 2007 and then we sort of decided then, uh, Clint and Steph sort of gave me a push in the back and said, go make a solo record and, you know, give the band a little rest and then we'll make a Something for Kate record after that. So that was always the plan, um, but it just ended up being six years. Um, because we, there was Something for Kate then released a best of album, we did another little tour and then I took like a year and a half to write my solo record and then I toured that record and I was living overseas for a couple of years and it just, time just flew past. So it's been six years, it doesn't f feel like it to us, but you know. Um, you know, obviously it's a wonderful experience on so many levels but I think it's actually been excellent for the band as well because we have less time for the band but it means that we sort of have to do everything with this like immediate energy like we have to make decisions in the moment and I think it's been the best thing for our music and yeah it's given us this different energy. You're always right. I mean you can tell it's us it's you know like it sounds like us there's like uh, uh, my voice uh, just makes it sound like us. I think it's probably the most recognisable thing about the band is my voice because it seems to be something that kind of polarises people. There's people who really like my voice and people who can't stand it. So I think people can sort of tell something for Kate straight away. So this sounds like us and... and but it sounds like a different us, you know. Um, this record feels a lot freer and just looser and sounds like three people playing instruments in a room. It was recorded pretty much that way. It was, there was no fiddling and noodling and, you know, procrastinating. It's just really, it is what it is. Um, so in a lot of ways it feels like a new beginning because I feel like our first five records you can sort of hear this evolution of a band figuring out how a recording studio works and then getting a little too obsessed with the recording studio. Um, and then this feels like a sort of reaction to all of that. We, rec we wrote it in half the time, we recorded it in half the time, and uh, so for that reason it just sounds like that. Ah, there it is. Um, this week, it's probably, uh, there's a song on the record called Sooner or Later, You're Gonna Have to Do Something About Me, and I'm just particularly enjoying that at the moment because we're rehearsing like crazy, so we've been playing all the songs a lot, and that one's just really fun to play. It's got some, you know, kind of cool, strange guitar sounds and a, and a really sort of self-indulgent guitar solo, and so... in the sense that every single thing I write is about me in some way, I guess, you know, you can't deny that. But um, it is sort of more specifically, it was sort of inspired by a lot of late night cab rides over the Brooklyn Bridge, um, you know, just coming home from nights out or coming home from shows or whatever, and just that drive, you know, out of Manhattan and over the Brooklyn Bridge back to our apartment. It's just such a, beautiful, beautiful sight, you know. Brooklyn Bridge at four o'clock in the morning is about the most beautiful thing on earth. Probably the first concert I went to that I remember with any kind of fondness was um, uh, seeing Nirvana and the Violent Femmes. And it was actually Nirvana opening for the Violent Femmes. I think Nevermind had just come out, it had been out maybe two or three months and they were just starting to kind of become this massive phenomenon. And uh, it was on the Gold Coast. It was uh, at the Spit at Southport, an outdoor show, twilight. Sun was just going down, water everywhere, and just thousands of people. I think the next show I went to after that was Sepultura at Festival Hall, which was also a very memorable show. Yeah, I mean, there's so many. I, I don't have one favourite. I, I have, you know, so many great memories. Uh, at random, you know, the first one that pops into my head is um, playing in an abandoned subway station uh, underground in uh, Germany 
in a town called Carlsruhe. I think it was Carlsruhe. Um, and that was just really awesome. You know, we were, we were on tour in Europe and we, you know, turned up to this town none of us had ever heard of and, you know, got the address of the venue and we're all standing there in this sort of park going, where, where is this venue? And, and uh, eventually someone pointed out that it was underground and we went downstairs and it's like this old subway station and just the subway platform was, you know, turned into a venue with a, with a makeshift bar and everyone was just hanging out down there drinking on a warm summer night and we got on stage and played this show. It was really cool. Uh, yeah, I think like the, I mean, I've, I've seen, I've been really lucky. I've seen a lot of great shows, but probably the one that just, yeah, I, I saw um, Fugazi at the Collingwood Town Hall in Melbourne and, and it was, the end of 1993, it was like the year I finished high school and Clint and I, you know, were massive Fugazi fans and uh, we, yeah, and Shellac were opening, so it was just an incredible show, it was amazing. Thank you so much, see you soon.